TikTok has a new trend in town. I hopped on the Borax train. I jumped on the Borax train. I have officially jumped on the Borax train. People jumping on the Borax bandwagon by adding the chemical compound to their water to create a Borax beverage. Okay. It's often used as a laundry detergent, but now TikTok users are saying Borax can help with a range of health issues, like relieving joint and muscle pain. It's a powerhouse anti-inflammatory. Hello, my lovelies. Welcome to Cape Bonnie Country. During the summer of 2023, we saw a lot of videos from people exclaiming that they consume borax for health benefits. Of course, I was perplexed. Didn't we establish back in 2018 that eating laundry detergent is bad for you? I was late to this party since I do not TikTok. So I decided to sit on it and do a retrospective instead. Today, we are going to look at this trend and try to figure out why it started in the first place, what we can safely use borax for, and check in to see if any of the people who ate borax last summer are still eating it. Before we go any farther, I just want to say welcome to Cape Bonnie Country. Thank you so much for stopping by. This channel is not possible without viewer support, so please remember to like this video, subscribe and get notified, comment, and share with your friends and family. So you can see that today I'm not wearing any makeup and I really didn't do much with my hair. I just wanted to sit down, do some research, and piece this thing together. And yes, I have scripted my parts because I did try to do a freestyle, and when I've got a lot of research involved, I will forget things if I don't write them down. So I started my research by searching for any explanatory videos that existed at the time. The first video started popping up in late June of 2023. I found this one from Versatile Wikipedia dated August 3rd, 2003. So this video was posted later in the trend, not at the very beginning. But it does demonstrate the information this trend was based on. So let's see what Vicky has to say. We have been told that consuming borax powder is extremely dangerous, but do you know that it has several health benefits when ingested? This is a pack of borax powder which I got from Amazon, and though it says detergent booster, it is safe to ingest in small quantities. Borax powder is an important boron compound, a mineral and a salt of boric acid. In simple words, it is composed of boron, oxygen, hydrogen, and sodium. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. First of all, yes, boric acid has a place in medicine. However, when used, it is done in minuscule controlled amounts, not in the unregulated sprinkling of a processed laundry additive as Miss Vicky does. I'm pretty sure she is using far too much, but it is considerably less than some of these TikTok videos use. Moving right along, the next video I came across features Tom Rowe, MD. So this gentleman went to medical school. Let's see what he has to say. Hi. My name is Dr. Todd Rowe, and I'm here to talk about the homeopathic medicine, Borax Veneta. Before I start, I'd just like to say that nothing in this material is meant to diagnose, treat, prescribe for, or cure any illness. Please consult your homeopathic practitioner for treatment options. <laughs> okay, so I absolutely love how a gentleman that went to medical school has to place a disclaimer stating that this is not a cure or treatment for anything right before he tells us what borax treats. The irony. Now, this guy has a flatter presentation than I do, so we're just going to go through and look at his wonderful slides I am not going to subject you to the four and a half minutes of this man going on about things. Here we see the chemical structure of borax and an explanation of what it is, a list of non-medicinal uses that most of us are probably familiar with, 
and what it does when it is used in homeopathic remedies. So you can see where I have highlighted the words trace minerals. When we see the word trace in reference to minerals within the human body, it means we need such a teeny tiny amount and that we almost cannot measure it. So clearly putting a whole teaspoon of borax into a glass of water and then drinking it is way too much. So his next slide gives us a list of ailments that borax allegedly treats, even though he just told us that it should not be used to treat or cure anything. His third slide also gives us a list of symptoms that borax can allegedly help with. Would you look at that? It can be used to treat anxiety. Hey, I knew I'd link this into mental health somehow. So, according to homeopathic. So, according to... Yeah, my earbud keeps slipping. So sorry. Anyway, if you're an anxious person, you can use borax to treat your anxiety. <sighs> So slide number four, well, I have a problem with this slide. He advocates using borax to treat common issues in developing young children like nightmares and sensitivity to sound. Those things are perfectly normal as the brain develops and learns to process new stimuli. So maybe we should consider a nice chamomile tea and some noise counseling headphones before we go to the borax, okay? His last slide seems to be mostly nonsense. These seem to be discussion points that didn't quite fit into the other slides. Some are actually side effects of using the borax. And that's all Dr. Rowe has for us. So my next move was to actually look at the medicinal uses for borate sodium, which is the chemical name of borax. I found more references to boric acid. Both borate sodium and boric acid contain boron, but they are not the same. It would be like saying an aluminum can and aluminum foil are the same thing because they both contain aluminum or aluminium if you're joining us from across the pond. Anyway, I came across this page from Science Direct. This page mostly summarizes other scientific publications. First, we see that it is used as a buffer in eye drops and ophthal ophthalmolic, ophthalmolic ointments. I knew I'd get it out of my mouth eventually. Ophthalmolic ointments to treat some eye conditions. Then it tells us it is an eye irritant when introduced directly, as opposed to a tiny amount in combination with other elements. Story time. My father worked in a limestone mine where they dehydrated the lime in order to make concrete mixes. And he did this for about 30 years. Now, when mixed with water, this dehydrated lime produces an exothermic reaction and is alkaline. In other words, it gets really, really hot. In excess of 200 degrees Fahrenheit, according to my sixth grade science experiment. So, dehydrated lime, when mixed with water, can produce both thermal and chemical burns. In order to counter the alkaline and stop the chemical burn, you have to introduce an acid to neutralize the alkaline. Well, my father worked around this for 30 years. Sometimes he would get the dehydrated lime dust in his eyes. When that happened, of course, it was severely painful because it was burning his eyes. So the immediate treatment, of course, was to flush his eyes out and then he had to carry around eye drops that contained boric acid. 
he would have to put those in his eyes immediately to stop the chemical burning process. He would have to put a boric acid ophthalmic ointment in his eyes before he went to bed every single night in order to repair the damage that this dehydrated lime dust did. So after finding out that boric acid is used as a buffer in eye drops and other ophthalmic solutions, which I kind of already knew, I scrolled down a little further and this heading, baby powder borates and camphor, caught my eye. And here it talks about the use of borate sodium in products like baby powder. And the very first sentence of this summary confirms what the TikTok users were saying. It has been used for around 4,000 years. The Babylonians used it during the gold purification process, and there is evidence to support that the Egyptians used it in their medications, and they also used it in mummification. You see, borax is a desiccant. It removes water. It dries things out. We will come back to that later. The next thing that caught my eye was that it was first described as an antiseptic by Lord Lister in 1875. Naturally, this sent my brain off on a tangent, and I had to stop what I was doing and go find out if this is the guy who created Listerine. Apparently, Listerine first came to market in 1879, and was created by Dr. Joseph Lawrence and Jordan Wheat Lambert. However, they did name it after Lord Dr. L Wait a minute. Is it Lord Dr. or Dr. Lord? You see, in America, we don't use aristocratic titles. So I'm not sure. Am I supposed to say Lord Dr. or Dr. Lord? I think Lord Dr. sounds better. Anyway, they did name it after Lord Dr. Joseph Lister. But I digress. The summary did go on to state that borate sodium was used to treat mouth sores in children. It was a common treatment for thrush. However, 11 children died during one study when they were given a 2.5% borax solution daily. 11 kids died. So, naturally, the scientific community decided that the risks of using borax outweigh the minimal antiseptic properties. And, well, Western medicine stopped using it. That said, borax solutions like this are still used in what Americans refer to as Eastern medicine or homeopathic medicine. And the majority of the people who practice this reside in Asia and the Indian subcontinent. And the last thing that really caught my eye on this page was a section on biochemistry. In a nutshell, boron is easily absorbed into the digestive system. It collects in the bones. It can alter gene expression when used as a dietary supplement. Oh boy. Now that sounds concerning because I know that altered gene expression is how some types of cancer start. But I am not a geneticist, so I don't know how this specific alteration affects the body. And it seems that ingesting borax in small, tiny, minuscule amounts is okay, but it is toxic in larger doses with this particular report saying, giving us a hard number of 2,000 parts per million. So some quick math. 2,000 parts per million is two-tenths of 1%. We know that 2.5% was toxic to 11 kids. So apparently, once you hit around two-tenths of 1%, you're looking at a toxic dosage. 
So the takeaway from all that is that boron in its many forms does have medicinal value. However, those benefits all come from extremely small doses within compounds with other elements that are created in a controlled laboratory environment. The kitchen is not a controlled laboratory environment. And the random amounts people used in their videos are clearly not the extremely small, minuscule doses that are safe. And we're back. I am so sorry about that little break. I had some puppy dog issues to deal with. So where were we? Oh yes, what is borax good for? Consumer grade borate sodium, also known as borax, is a wonderful cleaner. It's a great laundry booster. It deodorizes and cleans toilets very well. Tamir's bright orange rug that she loves to lay on has gotten very dingy and dirty lately. I'm going to have to hit it with borax to clean it up. I've never gotten on the slime train, but my understanding is that uh, borax is a key ingredient in making slime. Now, remember earlier when I said that borax is a desiccant and I'd come back to that? Well, we're coming back to that. A desiccant is a substance that is used to remove or absorb water. That is why it is a primary ingredient in a lot of insecticides. I mix an equal amount of borax and sugar and then pour it over anthills to kill the entire colony. Now I realize that insects are a very important part of our ecosystem, so I don't go around killing all of the anthills. I just focus on the fire ants that decide to build their house between my car and the front door, and in the yard where the dogs play. The worker ants, attracted by the sugar, will come out of the nest, gather up the granules of sugar, which are now coated in borax, take them back into the nest, and then any ant that eats it, including the queen, will dry out and die. Also, when I lived in Houston, Texas in the early 1990s, I bought a product called Roach Tuck at the dollar store across the street from my apartment complex. And these are basically sticks of super condensed hardened borax. You just draw a line across anywhere where a roach might enter your house. It could be your window frame, your doorway, the little openings in the, around the pipes. And either the roaches won't cross it. Or when they cross it, they get it on their legs, it contaminates whatever food they're eating, and then they eat it, it dries them from the inside out, and they die. And remember earlier when we were talking about the Babylonians and the Egyptians? Well, there's evidence that the Egyptians used borax as part of their mummification process. Why? Because a mummy is a desiccated, dried-out human body. So the borax played a role in drying out the bodies for mummification. I learned to mummify flowers when I was a child by using borax and cornmeal. 20 Mule Team Borax actually has a video on their page showing you how to do this. The link will be in the description. So now we know what borax is, the history of its medicinal use, and the other things we can use it for. But what happened to all of those people on TikTok that were drinking the borax six months ago? Did they get sick? Are they still using borax? What were their outcomes? Now, like I said at the beginning, I don't TikTok. However, it's very hard to research this topic without going on TikTok. So I connected my computer to the internet using a VPN. Thank you, Tamir. And as you can tell, the dogs are playing in the background. So I connected my computer to the internet using a VPN, and I opened an incognito browser and created a TikTok account using a throwaway email address. See, the Chinese government has this law where any Chinese company has to turn over user data 
on request. And I certainly don't want the Chinese government having my real information, do I? My dogs sound like they're about to kill each other, but they're really not. They're playing. Hey! 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 So I scoured the compilation videos to try to find the usernames of the individuals posted in them. I wanted to see if anybody had posted updates. I was able to locate one relevant video from Melody Rocks Your Socks. This video was posted November 4th of 2023. Let's see how she's doing roughly three to five months later. Hello, I am sick yet again. <sighs> I feel like I have been sick literally like every day, not every day, <laughs> every month. Uh, I cannot stop getting sick. I am immunocompromised, so that's worth noting. But I was like, you know what? There are these people I talk to that take this immunity booster formula and they're like, formula. I don't even know what I'm saying right now. Like, I just don't even get sick anymore. I haven't been sick for like a year. I was around people who had the cocoa and I, I didn't get sick. I don't get sick at all anymore. Um, I need some of that in my life. I am severely immune, um, 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 immunocompromised, and so I need this. I need this in my life. If that is true, I need this in my life. Oh. Okay, well, I cut her off there for a very good reason. For the rest of the video, she's just talking about this other supplement she's going to start taking to boost her immune system. And yeah, okay. Once again, she's jumping on a trend train. Now, she never straight up said whether she's still using the borax or not. But what she does say is that she is immunocompromised. She is getting sick at least once a month. And she didn't get this sick this often in her past. I believe she actually said a year ago. That a year ago she was around people who had COVID and she didn't get sick and she never got sick and now all of a sudden she's getting sick every month. Hmm. But then again she said she's immunocompromised. Generally speaking immunocompromised people will catch the common cold every time it goes around. So something isn't adding up here. I'm not sure what that is and I'm not going to jump to any conclusions. But what we do have but what we find here is a correlation. She didn't get sick very often. She consumed borax. And now she's getting sick more often. Correlation is not the same as causation. We cannot say that consuming the borax has caused her to become immunocompromised. We cannot say that. There is no evidence to support that conclusion. But it is entirely possible and even likely that she was experiencing immune issues and started taking the borax thinking it would help. So we are left wondering what role borax has played in her current health situation. I also found a video from Athena von Dusseldorf dated June 30th of 2023. So this was early on in the trend. She suffers from chronic pain and inflammation due to previous injuries. In a desperate attempt to find relief, she followed the borax trend. However, instead of using borax powder, she purchased boron supplements in pill form. So we will pick up her video where she tells us what her outcome was. Mm. but it's got boron in it and they're saying that boron helps a lot with arthritis pain and in my desperation against my better judgment even at my advanced age I'm 49 you think you're not going to do stuff like that and I went ahead and got some pills that have three milligrams of boron in them, which boron is a natural element. It's just salt, basically, from what I understand. So I got those pills. You take two of them a day, so you get six milligrams of boron. But they're saying that the borax is the same thing. It's sodium borate. 
that you sprinkle it. And these people were showing that they put a good teaspoon in their water and they sip on it through the day. This other lady said that she put it in her salt shaker and she sprinkled it on her food. These people are saying it's just, you know, pharmaceutical companies don't want you to know about it. But anyway, I did it for a couple of days and I poisoned myself. I literally poisoned myself. I had to call out of work. I was throwing up. I had such a headache that I felt like my brain was swelling. I went from fever to chills to fever to chills. And right behind me, I'll show you what I sped up. It looks like metal. It looks like iron or flakes of metal. So yeah, you're never too old to be stupid. I truly hope that she did not sustain any long-term damage and is better now. But right there at the end, you're never too old to be stupid. She's 49 years old. She's only two years younger than me. Now I'm going to cut her some slack. You see, she went to a store and she bought boron supplements that are intended for human consumption. Millions of people take dietary supplements every single day. So just taking a supplement is not stupid. Taking a supplement just because random people on the internet told you to is stupid. I take dietary supplements. I take plant estrogens to try to prevent osteoporosis. I take St. John's wort to combat depressive episodes. Do not take anything just because I take it. I researched these herbal supplements years ago. I know because of the research I did that St. John's wort is contraindicated if you take serotonin reuptake inhibitors or MAOIs. So please research. Do the research yourself before you take any dietary supplements. Oops. The takeaway here is always make informed choices for yourself. Don't jump on trends. Dig in and research before you choose what is best for you. If the influencers you watch eat or drink a product that clearly says not for human consumption on the box, you probably should pay attention to the box and not the influencer. So I am going to take this box of borax and put it to proper use. I have a dirty rug to clean. I need to mix up a batch of ant killer for the spring emergence. And if I'm lucky, I might be able to find some winter flowers to preserve. 